What looks like a scene out of a science fiction movie is actually real. Scientists from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory have manipulated spacecraft data of Venus to give a bird's eye view of its surface. Venus is out there being digitized, but this digital model, this virtual reality of Venus is what's actually being explored on Earth. Dr. Michael McGreevy of NASA's Ames Research Center has taken the idea of being there a few steps further. By strapping on 3D visual display goggles and specially censored gloves, one can be immersed into new worlds. What is unique about virtual reality is that the user has complete control over the environment. Head or body movements translate directly into the way a simulated Martian landscape is seen. In another example, the task is to withdraw a square shape from its slot. The operator's glove can be manipulated to control a robotic arm, while sound cues help with depth perception and finding proper fit. Scientists have also designed a virtual wind tunnel. The investigator can move anywhere in the tunnel to study airflow. Virtual reality gives the operator complete choice and is beginning to be used for a variety of commercial applications. What sets NASA apart in this uh, current climate is that we aren't looking at the mainstream applications uh, of the, this global activity, which tend to be entertainment and uh, video games. We're more looking to how to use this for scientific visualization. Uh, in particular, looking at the detailed environments of the planets, uh, looking at computational fluid dynamics models of the airflow over a wing, uh, that sort of thing. Virtual reality is an idea that dates back to the 60s and will be commonplace by the next decade. Already, it has been used during the Gulf War to train tank commanders and soldiers. The American bobsled team honed their skills for the Olympics with a form of virtual reality. And the Japanese have developed a system that allows architects to walk clients through a virtual building before it's constructed. The dry valleys of Antarctica may soon become a far-reaching outlet for this technology. Scientists have long been interested in the area because it is so similar to Mars. Its frozen lakes contain primitive microbial gnats that live in the water below many feet of ice. Researchers at NASA Ames are planning to use a form of virtual reality called telepresence to operate a remote imaging and sampling vehicle to explore this bizarre world. Dr. Carol Stoker leads this effort. With telepresence, we think that, that uh, we can really expand the range of access to the surface of Mars from a scientific perspective, not just in terms of operating you know, relatively uh, simple robots to do things like construction, but, but really to do scientific field work. The potential of virtual reality and telepresence and planetary exploration is very promising. And earthly applications derived from this research may become products we use every day. Yeah, I'll use the um, the Exos B iconifier. Okay, let's get this window right here. B iconifier, good. And let's get this window B iconifier. One is to measure the gestures of our uh, folks in the field, and also to transmit those gestures into the virtual environment and into the telepresent environment. However, what we're working on is the ability to reach down and grab that rock right there, pick up a piece of that rock, look at it, check for the glints, and then to take it and put it into your pack. Extract it out that one for the small areas. And oh, is that right? Is, to do the walk around is pie rock in that pie small? Pie rock in the one to the left. 